No man can roam or inhabit the Canadian North without it affecting him. And the artist, because of his constant habit of awareness and his discipline in expression, is perhaps more understanding of its moods and spirit than others are, said Lauren Harris, founding member of the Group of Seven. Today, uncountable thousands of people traveling anywhere on the Lake Superior Circle Tour are coming to understand those moods and spirit of not only Gitche but also the wilderness, the lakes, and the rivers surrounding it. For some, inspiration can come from just a glimpse of a coastline vista as they pass by on the Trans-Canada Highway. Others explore the region more deeply through camping, hiking, boating, photography, hunting or fishing. And for many of these visitors, it becomes more than an ordinary vacation. They experience an epiphany of a deep soulful connection, a divine revelation perhaps, whether realized or not, which keeps them coming back over and over again. And of course, there are those that have come and never left and those whose families have been on or around Lake Superior for generations. The Algoma region and Lake Superior coastline in the province of Ontario has spectacular landscapes and inland gorges that snake around seemingly endless mountains and tall steep rock faces and valleys. No one understood the majesty, the divine connection of these vistas on the eastern and northern regions of Lake Superior better than the artists known as the Canadian Group of Seven. Lauren Harris, A.Y. Jackson, Franz Johnston, Arthur Lismer, J.E.H. MacDonald, Franklin Carmichael, and F.H. Varley. Lauren Harris formed the group in Toronto in 1920, initially known as the Algonquin School of Landscape Painters. He invited the like-minded artists to find a way to exhibit their works and to promote the idea of a new Canadian art movement. Their vision and their effort to find a national identity through art resulted in a complete departure from the traditionally detailed landscape paintings found throughout Europe in the early 20th century. A.Y. Jackson commented, After painting in Europe where everything was mellowed by time and human associations, I found it a problem to paint a country in outward appearance pretty much as it had been when Champlain passed through the thousands of rock islands 300 years before. The group started painting wilderness landscapes, which at the time was considered a radical move. It was an unusual style with significant inspirations from Tom Thompson, who painted extensively in Algonquin Park in Ontario, where he mysteriously died in 1917, before the group was formed. Lauren Harris's style is described as smooth, didn't use details and used few colors, mainly blue, white and brown with a touch of yellow. His subjects were usually mountains, lakes, clouds and sometimes trees. The landscape paintings had no flowers, animals or people. His style became the foundation of many of the group's paintings. Between 1918 and 1928, the Group of Seven produced countless landscape paintings around the north shore of Lake Superior and the adjacent Algoma region, especially along the Algoma Central Railway Line. One of the many famed locations was in and around the Agawa Canyon. The Algoma Central Railway track through Agua Canyon was laid in 1911, and a few years later, in 1918 and 19, Lauren Harris financed two famous boxcar trips for his fellow artists. 
The rail car was once a mobile work gang office. Harris had it refurbished as a studio and living quarters. It had bunks, a stove, cooking utensils, a moose skull, and a canoe. He had it delivered near the Agua Canyon, and when required, it was shunted to various sidings near choice painting locations. Harris, along with J.E.H. MacDonald, A.Y. Jackson, Arthur Lismer, and Frank Johnston, traveled on foot, by canoe, and even a velocipede rail bike, commonly known as a peed, searching out the natural wonders of the Canadian Shield. They trekked through the bush where mosquitoes and blackflies were so thick that moose fled to open areas to avoid the bites. Not too unlike the conditions today in the northern Ontario wilderness. The rewards far outweighed the misery and they spent long hours, days, weeks and months searching, sitting, sketching and painting with the intent their art would stop the viewer in their tracks and provoke them to look at their art with new eyes and a new understanding. In fact, the style, the art created by the group of seven was so iconic and so stirring, it enhanced the Canadian national identity and remains as thought and emotionally provoking today as it was 100 years ago. Traveling the Lake Superior Circle Tour is a multifaceted adventure with endless traveling options on foot, by car, boat, and by plane. But once in a while, you might need a break, a day off perhaps. What better way to relax and energize your trip than to take a day-long train excursion on the Agua Canyon Tour train? Destination? The Agua Canyon Wilderness Park. The park was developed in 1952 and today there have been over 3 million visitors. There are no roads leading to the park, but it can be reached on hiking trails from Lake Superior Provincial Park. The train station is located in downtown Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. Boarding takes place early in the morning and the train returns in the early evening. It travels 114 miles northward from Sault Ste. Marie, paralleling Lake Superior from a short distance inland. Gliding along in the train, you come across many points of interest that are triggered by a GPS commentary. It includes stories of the Ojibwe, the fur traders, explorers, pioneers, and of course, the group of seven. There is also a camera, attached to the front of the train, which feeds into monitors in each passenger car. The commentary points out the difficulty of building this rail line through the rugged terrain of the Canadian Shield. One example is at mile 73, where it took over 2,000 men an entire summer to lay down just a few kilometers of track. The Algoma Central Railway was originally built as a feeder line to industries around Sault Ste. Marie for hauling ore, pulp and logs from the Michipicot and Wawa area of Lake Superior. You'll be happy to learn that there are many wilderness lodges and resorts along this route, which you can visit for the fishing or hunting, for the scenery or just to get away and relax. Another highlight on the tour is traveling over the towering trestle at Montreal River that cuts through the Canadian Shield on its way to Lake Superior. At mile 102, the train starts a descent of 500 feet over 10 miles into the canyon, hugging the canyon wall. The canyon was carved by the Agawa River on its way to spilling into Lake Superior near the famous Agawa Rock pictographs a sacred Ojibwe site. 
At the park, the train makes a one and a half hour stop, leaving visitors with several options to explore the canyon. The Lookout Trail is a bit of a workout, ascending 250 feet above the tracks and 300 stairs to Lookout platforms. Other options include a souvenir rail car, a picnic area, and trails to the famed group of seven sketch and painting sites. You have to imagine that when Lauren Harris and his friends walked along the river's edge, it wasn't landscaped and there were no cleared paths. Other than the railway going through the canyon, there was only wilderness. Beavers, otters, all sorts of smaller animals and birds. The river trail follows the bank of the Agua River to Bridal Vale and Black Beaver Falls. Bridal Vale Falls is the site of many of the group's sketches and paintings. Several sketches appear to have been from the railroad tracks looking across the Agua River. J.E.H. MacDonald crossed the river in a canoe and painted at the base of the falls. Frank Johnston also crossed the river and wanting to be different, with a different view, climbed the rugged cliff to find a unique point of view halfway up the falls. The water flows range from a trickle to torrents, depending on the runoff from snow and rain. Bridal Vale Falls is 225 feet high. The paintings are mesmerizing, but to see it in person is even more spectacular. Frank MacDonald commented on the canyon. There seems to be the original site of the Garden of Eden. It is almost a fairyland, a goblin land, any I've seen. It is a land after Dante's heart. The canyon seems to lead upwards and is all the attributes of the imagined paradise. It would have made a great background for gods and goddesses. Black Beaver Falls is 175 feet high and seemingly split in two. It is a popular photo opportunity for visitors and just to the north is Otter Creek Falls at a height of 45 feet. After 90 minutes, the train calls all passengers to return and board for the trip back to Sault Ste. Marie. The Agua tour train slowly departs, but it leaves visitors wanting a lot more. There are many group of seven landscape sites along the Ontario coastline of Lake Superior. Some are easily accessible and others require some physical effort on trails rated medium to difficult. One example is the town of Marathon, currently developing a Lake Superior group of seven trail. 35 kilometers of the route are currently accessible and another 20 kilometers are in the works. 
The most notable locations are the shoreline perspectives in Nays Provincial Park and of note, Lauren Harris's famous Pick Island Lake Superior. Further west along the coast is the location of the old and long gone fishing village at Coldwell Bay. Lauren Harris painted Ice House, Coldwell, Lake Superior in 1923. One of the most remarkable paintings by Lauren Harris is North Shore, Lake Superior, an oil on canvas painted in 1926. It was purchased by the National Gallery of Canada in 1930, where it still remains. Harris described his art style as a realm of life between our mundane everyday world and a world of the spirit. Famous actor, musician, author Steve Martin described this painting as very dramatic. There is a lone dead tree, almost dead center, which is usually something artists would not do. But somehow it works. Here's a real example of nothing living. You have a dead tree. And yet in the background you have these incredible bursts of sun rays and the light reflecting on the water. And it's an optimistic painting. It's almost like a phoenix rising. Travelers on the Lake Superior Circle Tour can book guided or create self-guided group of seven adventures. However, if one were to get a true insight of what the group of seven saw, what they felt and did, then you need to book a kayaking or hiking adventure through outdoor experts such as James Smedley of Wawa, a professional award-winning photographer, writer, travel editor at Ontario Out of Doors magazine. In an article Smedley wrote titled Grasping the Magnificence, he focuses on the search for Group of Seven painting sites. His area of expertise is the Algoma Wilderness and the North Shore of Lake Superior. Smedley wrote, Exploring the landscape visited by the Group of Seven is more than pinpointing exactly where a particular painting was rendered. It's about experiencing dramatically beautiful areas of the province, whether it's a photograph, a painting, or simply a vivid memory. Spending time in the Algoma wilderness means coming home with some valuable moments of your own. Kichigumi inspired the Group of Seven in profound ways that resulted in a Canadian national identity through art. But the group were not and are not exclusive to creative inspirations on or around the Big Lake. 